Hi again, we have already analyzed this very common imbalance on which we have a knight playing against a bishop and we saw a position on which a bishop dominated a knight and another position, which is the one that we have in front, on which a knight dominates a bishop. And the main problem that the bishop has is that the bishop only controls squares of one color. So just to remind you this position, black here even managed to play the move before, so now this bishop is at least active, but on the other hand, this bishop only controls light squares and white has most of the pawns on dark squares, that's why this bishop doesn't have any bright future. Whereas knights, here we have this very strong knight on e5, which additionally cannot be traded. In this case, the knight controls light squares, but if the knight moves to a light square, then it will control dark squares. So the knight can switch from one square to another and control squares of both colors. So this is a disadvantage that the bishop has. That's why whenever we have two bishops, what we call the bishop pair, bishops complement each other really well. And whenever we have two bishops that are active against a bishop and a knight or two knights, they can be particularly strong. Let's analyze a few positions to illustrate this idea. Here in this position, it is white's turn. White can take this knight on e7, but on the other hand, black would just capture on b5. And here we have a bishop against a knight. This bishop is not weak, but this knight might also try to come to d4. It's going to be centralized, might even put some pressure on f3. So this position is not that clear. So in the game, white decided to keep the two bishops by playing the move bishop to d7. And we can already see, first of all, that these two bishops are quite active. And secondly, that knights here are lacking good squares. This knight on e7, if it has to move, it only has one square going to g6, which is what happened in the game. So in this case, the knight cannot come to c6 and then to d4. And the knight on g6 doesn't have any future. We see that it's being controlled by this pawn. So we can already see how white is having an advantage. Why continue with the move bishop to d6, attacking the other knight, and putting pressure on e5, and after knight to e6, again white doesn't want to exchange a bishop for a knight, but to keep these two bishops, and the game continues bishop to b8, and we can already see how white is the one attacking, having the more active pieces, and it is already becoming hard for black to defend. Black played some creative moves, but still was not able to hold the game, first played the move knight to c5, attacking the bishop, and after bishop to h3, a5, the pawn was being attacked, and after bishop to a7, it is already difficult to defend this pawn, the knight cannot come to d7, because the bishop is controlling the square, and after knight to a4, b3, attacking the knight, knight to c5, b4, black took on b4, white took on b4, and after knight to a6, b5, knight to c7, so black is really trying hard to attack white's pawn, but after the move bishop to d7, white defended this pawn, and now this pawn is going to fall. The game continued king to f8, and after bishop to b6, white won a pawn, and is still having a large advantage, since white is having the more active pieces. Now bishops, since they can be very active, they can control the board, they are also great attacking pieces. In this position here black has the bishop pair and white has a bishop and a knight and after the move bishop b7 we see how these two bishops are looking at white's king and here in this position white should have tried something like knight to d5 trying to neutralize this bishop. This knight on d5 looks very attractive but black might think sooner or later to kick it away with the move c6 for example playing the move bishop to c5 and then c6 and even if white starts having serious threats, which is not the case here, black might even consider taking on e5. So this knight is centralized, but it is not that stable there. And I would say that it is not stronger than this bishop, because this bishop has the power to trade the knight whenever the bishop wants. So remember that a piece is strong not only when it's active, but also when it cannot be traded or attacked. So in this position, I would still probably prefer black, but this was much better than what was played in the game. In the game, instead of knight to d5, white played the move rook to e2, and black played the very strong bishop takes h2. So here we'll see the power of two bishops attacking. Black played the move bishop takes h2, and after taking on h2, 
otherwise black wins a pawn for nothing queen to h4, king to g1 and here black gave another bishop, took on g2, also planning to give a checkmate and after king takes, queen to g4, king to h2, rook to e5 black is just planning to give a checkmate and the only way to avoid that is to play the move queen to d5, just giving the queen, but black is already having advantage after taking on d5, so black won the game pretty quickly. And last but not least, two bishops, they are not necessarily stronger than a bishop and a knight or two knights, so do not exchange pieces automatically to get the bishop pair. Here is a great example of how two knights can even be stronger than two bishops. First of all, the two knights are centralized and they are stable there. Black's bishop on f8 is actually quite passive, just sitting there defending this pawn on d6. So here we see how the center is pretty blocked. And normally, when we have a position on which the center is blocked, the bishops might not get active easily. Black's bishop on f5 is a bit stronger than the bishop on f8, but white has a safe king, so here white's position is better. So the two knights are clearly outplaying the two bishops. In the game, white continued with the move rook to c4. Other moves were possible, rook to e3, for example. And the main point is that if black ever takes on e4, then white can simply take on e4. And then we get this position on which we have a dominant knight on d5, which cannot be challenged. And black has this very passive bishop on f8. So here, white has a clear strategic advantage. And in the game, black didn't take on e4. Black is a very strong player who knows a lot about strategy. Black continued with the move queen to h5, but actually it is hard for black to find a plan here, because black's pieces are not very good. And white is just slowly increasing the pressure on d6. So white has a clear advantage here and won the game shortly afterwards. So keep in mind this idea of using the bishop pair against a knight and bishop or two knights. This is a very common material imbalance. But don't make it an absolute rule that two bishops are better.